We should begin, though, with how it ended because one of the biggest surprises, and it's, it's hard to really rank them because there were so many, but it definitely was a surprise last night that the Titans went into SoFi Stadium and handled the Rams without Derrick Henry because we all thought, hey, Derrick Henry's gone. It's over. It all falls apart. He's the keystone to that team. If you don't have that guy that's drawing all the attention from the defense and opening up the passing game, the defense isn't going to be able to hold up. The offense isn't going to be able to get it done. And they're playing the Rams, one of the best teams in football, if not the best team in football, who just got Von Miller. Even though he didn't play, they had that aura. Right. They had that spark. They, they were going all in. And just like Teddy KGB, who went all in, Rams lost last night. That, that, that was a real stunner to me, Mike. Well, it really was. But I, I think what you're starting to see, and I, and I know as, as we get into to this game, it did hurt the Titans' offense. They, had, they didn't have 200 yards offense. They had no offense. But their defense handed them things on a silver platter, one by scoring and the other by putting them, you know, deep in the red zone right by the goal line and scoring on one play. So I, what I, I like to get takeaways from games. And as we get into this one and the different idiosyncrasies of the game, the one thing I'll say, and we've seen it over a few weeks in building, is this Tennessee defense, who I believe we all thought was a liability at the beginning of the season, and they were playing like that early on, and they were being carried by King Henry and what that offense was able to do. But that defense, over the last few weeks, has started to play better. Jeffrey Simmons is an absolute menace up front. Kevin Byard is incredible in the secondary. That pick he had yesterday, that was that was purely film study and game planning and knowing exactly where Stafford was going to go with the ball. Uh, holding this high-scoring Rams team to three field goals. And you can't win on field goals. Normally you can against lower scoring teams, but you know, Tennessee is averaging, I think, you know, in the obviously in the upper twenties in points, but you need to get touchdowns, not field goals. So to me, last night, this was about the Tennessee Titans and a defense that's consistently been getting better and better. King Henry's not coming back. I, I doubt he's going to be coming back. But if this defense can keep playing better and they can find more rhythm on offense, because this was just their first game without Derrick Henry, we'll see where the running game goes. I know Adrian Peterson was in yesterday, didn't really do anything. But first game back, so we'll see where they can build that again. Not going to be what it was with Derrick Henry. But to me, Mike, the most impressive thing has been the – this defense kind of coming along more and more. I love what Kevin Byard said after the game. He said, we're not out to prove people wrong about what they said. We're out to prove ourselves right because we know what we are as a defense, and they're really starting to attain that. Adrian Peterson did have the the Don Meredith turn out the lights touchdown, even though his numbers yeah, weren't fantastic, just 21 rushing yards on 10 attempts. Deontay Foreman and Jeremy McNichols both had more, but not much more. They spread it around and they didn't do much with it. But you're right about that defense. And Mike, we see this every year. Teams get better or teams get worse. They rarely stay the same as they are in September. And that defense has gotten better on the fly. And what we're seeing as we get deeper into the season is the product of good coaching because it's film study. It's picking up tendencies. You've talked in the past about the nuances of study, 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 study. By the time you get to this point of the season, some teams can crack the code on what other teams are doing. And the challenge for the team that's doing things well is don't get complacent. Always be testing yourself because there's a chance that next opponent is going to be the one that has figured you out. And it sure looked like the Titans, Mike, had figured out the Rams last night. Yeah, oh, they absolutely did. I mean, again, holding them as they're driving to three field goals, a huge stop on downs with a little over six minutes to go in the game. And then, you, you know, you have another team, though. What, what helps on the other side of that, Mike, is when the other team kind of shoots themselves in the foot. The Rams come in as the least penalized team in the NFL, and they have, what, 12 for 100 and some yards last night? I mean, by the way, a horrible roughing the passer call on Aaron Donald. I mean, just just ridiculous ridiculous on some of the things they call and or don't call but they still had a ton of dumb penalties that just absolutely hurt them at times as well and then you get you know Matthew Stafford making those decisions you know that that ridiculous you know spinning around throwing the ball you know to just to think it's going to be a safety and I know afterward you know the the referee they had on the game saying 
it, it, in the booth. It probably would have been at the one-yard line because the ball was over the line. Well, Stafford didn't know that. He thought he was getting tackled in the end zone and thought it was going to be a safety. So he wasn't, he wasn't aware of that. He was just trying to get rid of the ball, and boy, what a mistake that was. By the way, that is his 24th, and not that one, but the Bayard one, was his 24th pick six, 24th in his career. That's the most of all active quarterbacks. So he's prone and has been to make these kind of mistakes where he throws the ball to the other team and it goes all the way. So that came up last night. The penalties came up last night. Not finishing drives came up last night, but that you really credit the Tennessee Titans for. So while I, well, without question, I will stick with what I said. Man, you study that film, and it's a long season. It's a grind to stay in that pattern of show up early to lift, show up early to watch film, stay late to watch more film, maybe do more lifting. I mean, you get in a rhythm, and you keep going, and that's what you see better teams doing because they realize we have somewhere to go. That's where it starts falling apart for worse teams. All of a sudden, when they know they're out of it, they don't show up to lift in the morning. They don't maybe stay as late to watch as much film, and it kind of, kind of steamrolls on them a little bit. Not all players, but some players. But the good teams, they continue to do what they need to do uh, to get the wins. And I think this ten, I can't say enough about this Titan defense just building over the year. Now let's see if they can hold it. All those little things that we don't know about that are so critical to the preparation for the three hours that we actually have access to seeing what the players do every week that they play. And, you know, it's the second straight game in which we saw the Titans defense put the opposing quarterback in a position to do something ridiculously stupid from his own end zone. The only difference between what we saw last night and the prior Sunday was Matthew Stafford didn't switch hands before throwing the ball. But it was the same yeah. idea, panic mode in the end zone, in theory trying to avoid a safety and ultimately coughing the ball up. But, but at some point it does become something where we need to credit the Titans for understanding – where they have the offense and digging a little deeper and getting after the quarterback in that spot, finding a little stronger reservoir of will and intensity to create that moment. And that's what they do. I mean, when it's happened twice in two weeks, they get some credit for creating the moment and they did it and it worked and it, and it was huge in both games. Here's Mike Vrabel, the coach of the Titans on how the team has improved from week one when they were blown out and embarrassed at home by the Cardinals to where they are now eight games later. Success leads to confidence, you know, going out there and being able to view it, continue to improve, and that's, that's the message. You know, we're, we're, we're better now than what we were uh, to start the season, and, and that's the most important thing in the National Football League is that you find ways to continue to improve. I mean, you obviously have to find ways to win, but along the way, you got to find ways to get better. Because um, if you don't, you'll, you'll find yourself you know, on the outside looking in. Because there's a lot of teams that are going to continue to you know, improve, and we have to be one of those. If you purchased a ticket for Mike Vrabel, Coach of the Year, back in August, you probably got pretty good value, and you're probably feeling pretty good about that one right now. Because I'd say, Mike, based upon what we've seen, especially last night without Derrick Henry, if I had to start – listing the favorites for coach of the year halfway through the season. Mike Vrabel's number one. Oh, yeah. I mean, as you mentioned, blown off the first week. This is a team that lost to the Jets when you start looking at the, the, some of the, the bad losses out there and where they are now. Now they're not in the greatest division without question, but they're doing what they need to do. They need to take charge in that division, and that's what uh, they did. And I love what he said there about – Man, if you can improve through the years, we've always said you don't know what you are that first and second week or you have an idea, but what do you grow to? And, what the, and, then, and then the curveballs you get thrown along the way, like they just got thrown a major one, a major you know, drop in, with, with uh, Derrick Henry being out and not coming back. So, okay, you have to adjust. That's the thing about it. You have to adjust on the fly. Usually every team has to. And how do you do it? How do you adjust on the fly? Now, again, we saw last night, the offense really didn't. The offense was, was really nothing last night going for under 200 yards. But, I, but now it's going to be, okay, there was our roadblock in the, in the middle of the year. We lost our best player. Now how do we come out of that? And luckily, while that was going on, and even a little earlier, your defense started playing better and better and showing improvement. Vrabel's got to be, being a defensive guy, has to be just ecstatic at what he's seeing about that defense. So if that defense plays like that 
And what it's going to do, again, it's going to keep you in every game uh, because this offense lost a lot. So how now does the offense be able to flip their switch on what direction they're going to go without Derrick Henry? And the Titans have now won five in a row since somehow losing to the Jets in week four. They have been underdogs, Mike, in each of the last four games. They beat the Bills, Chiefs, Colts, and Rams. They've got the Saints coming to town this weekend. Texans and then at the Patriots that's a showdown that's looming on Thanksgiving yep. weekend uh, and then they have a very late bye but but this team is hitting their stride you look at the remaining schedule there aren't when you consider what they've accomplished the past four weeks I look at the back half of this Mike and I don't see any pulsating L's other than at Patriots although the Patriots haven't done well at home this season the Patriots seem to be moving in the right direction there's almost uh, I could they run the table look at the back half well I think they could run the table well, well, well what I look at Mike is our team's playing for something the Patriots find themselves just one loss behind the Bills right now right the Steelers in that AFC North that is a competitive division so but for the 49ers the the uh, you know they're probably not going to be playing for anything we saw the Texans down there the Dolphins down there in the last two games so it'll be interesting where they sit before those last two weeks because obviously they're going to wrap up the division but they're going to, then you're going to want to see where do we sit in the conference and what do we do those last two games so yeah on that last few games there I only saw a couple where teams are really fighting for something and a lot of times depending on the players and depending on the organization sometimes those last few weeks for teams that aren't in it like I've always said they have U-Hauls hitched up to the cars you know and when that season's over they're ready to go so or you find a team that's not in it and they can play that spoiler role like that seems to be what the you know the Giants are, are going to be doing uh, the last part of the season is they're trying to get better and look to the future maybe be a spoiler and not want to run into a team like that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.